this video is for diabetics specifically diabetics who are not yet taking insulin type 2 diabetics who are not on insulin in today's video i'm going to talk about three mistakes and if i have time i might give one more bonus but three things that you are doing that could be increasing your chance of needing insulin in the future for those of you who haven't met me before i'm dr Anna goodwin a physician and a health coach now let's dive right into it to save time so a lot of diabetics the fear type 2 diabetics i'm talking about not type 1 that's in a whole different class but the biggest fear of a lot of diabetics is having to take insulin eventually they would say oh i don't want to be on insulin i don't like needles oh my goodness you know so let's see what i can uh, share with you that might decrease your chance of having to take um insulin the first thing is depending on your medicines as the be all and end all of diabetes management management the medications that you're prescribed are treating the symptoms of your condition the symptom the condition being insulin resistance and they are not getting to the root cause most most of them they're not metformin is one that helps with insulin resistance but that's probably the only one that really helps significantly with that but for the most part, the others are trying to get your body to be, produce more insulin um, and just maybe be more efficient in general as you in use of utilizing the glucose in your body. Um, uh, various ways of doing that. But for the most part, these medications don't get to the root cause, which is insulin resistance. And so if you are one of those people who think, oh, well, I'll just I can continue to eat and do everything as I've been doing before, as long as I take my medication, that your chance of ending up on insulin will be higher than if you really paid attention to how you are eating and eating in a way that your blood sugar your blood glucose levels do not go up significantly after every meal too many people are just relying on the medications as the answer um, you think that the medications will fix you but you know because we know that type 2 diabetes is a problem with diet with how you eating and lifestyle in general it means that to fix a problem like that or even potentially cure a problem like that you have to attack you have to tackle the lifestyle you have to tackle the way you eat the type of foods you eat and the medications should be thought of as a bridge while you tackle the root cause which is how you are eating okay and so just thinking that okay the medicines i'm just going to depend on medicines or i just have to take my medicines and everything else will be fine that is why a lot of diabetics find that they have to their medicine doses increase every year and they get new medicines added every year as well or every few years and so most diabetics are not just taking one medicine they're not just taking two but many of them are taking three and four different medications and in many cases still struggling to get their blood levels at the goal that they want them to be and it's because of not fixing the specific root cause of this problem which is diet and lifestyle so that's one thing don't depend only on your medicines the medicines will help you for sure but you have to help yourself along by adjusting the way you eat, which means, and I've done other videos on this about how to eat in a way so that your blood sugar, in fact, some of my recent videos, and I'll link them below, um, talk about how fiber is one of those ingredients, those key ingredients, incorporating a lot of fiber in your food is gonna be one of those things that's really going to dramatically help your blood sugar levels. So you can check that video out um, by looking in the links below. Okay, that's one. Second thing, drinking diet drinks and that's a common thing you know most uh, diabetics think i mean it's because of marketing and how we've been fooled to think that oh one if it's diet it has those artificial sweeteners those are not sugar those are not going to carry blood sugar we're learning more and more now that those artificial sweeteners do not help in fact most people that depend and rely on artificial sweeteners steadily progress their condition steadily progress the diabetes steadily worsens and a lot of these people as well also steadily gain weight. And for those of you affected, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? You're taking, everything is diet, you know, diet drinks and so on, diet, uh, salad dressing, everything. But you're still, you're still taking, you know, you're not getting better. And I've actually had um, patients, in fact, I remember this specific patient, he was so blown away when he realized that after getting a continuous glucose monitor, and he saw with his own eyes that every time he had a diet drink, his blood sugar reading went up on his glucose monitor. 
And so because he was able to see that himself in his own body, he realized, oh my goodness, this is a scam. That's what he told me. He said, this is a scam. These diet drinks are a scam. And he totally gave them up because he realized that he was fooling himself because his blood sugar went up nevertheless. Um, sometimes it's not aspartame or sucralose, those um, artificial ones, but even some of the ones that are deemed as more safe, the sugar alcohol, xylitol, maltitol, those definitely increase blood sugar levels. And, um, and then even erythritol, that one came out in the news recently as one that um, is associated potentially with increases of heart attack and stroke because it causes uh, clots forming the blood vessels. So um, that's an aside, but uh, sugar alcohols we know also, they might not be 100% absorbed, but there are small amounts that are absorbed. And then if you're thinking, okay, the artificial sweeteners, they're safe, they're not affecting me. So your tendency is of tendency of even having more of these things because you think it's safe is higher and so whereas it might be okay in small amounts because of overconsumption of these things every day um you know every week then it's going to negatively impact your blood sugar another thing as well with artificial sweetness is that they negatively impact the ba bacteria in the intestine it's a microbiome and we're learning again more and more about how important the microbiome the good bacteria in the intestines are with regulating blood sugar and helping to calm down or improve insulin resistance the root cause of type 2 diabetes so many reasons to just avoid these artificial sweeteners and generally aim to wean yourself off the sweet taste of sugar so that you're not a slave to having something sweet all the time and then the last one is and this one is a hidden one too uh consuming a lot of dairy products but especially low-fat dairy so dairy generally a bit of dairy is not going to be a problem whole milk um cream half and half because if it's the natural milk or the natural cream that is coming with fat so you're having almost in a one to one to one ratio one third one third one third you're having fat you're having protein and you're having uh fat for carbohydrates okay starch now the thing with the low fat versions is that you're not having that fat the presence of fat helps to slow down the absorption of the milk sugars into your bloodstream or of any sugar you're taking. Having fat with it is going to slow down the absorption of that sugar and so you're not going to have that rapid spike in blood sugar levels which will contribute to the worsening of insulin resistance and the worsening of your diabetes. And so um, when you're having the low fat versions, you're having basically protein and straight starch, straight carbohydrates, carbohydrates rather. And so it's going to be more rapidly absorbed into your bloodstream. And there are charts that you might have access to on the internet, um, but you, for people who are able to monitor their blood sugars with levels with a continuous glucose monitor, they will see for themselves that when they have a cup of coffee that had low fat uh, milk, their blood sugar will spike higher than if they had a cup of coffee with whole milk or half and half. In fact, a cup of coffee with whole milk or half and half will maybe result in a little blip in the blood sugar level compared to a cup of coffee with low fat milk or skim milk. You have a pretty significant spike and it's the absence of fat, which means that you're going to more rapidly absorb the, uh, the, the uh, carbohydrate. Another thing that you might not be aware of where uh, milk is concerned or dairy is concerned is that dairy has lactose, which is a milk sugar. And if your taste buds are sensitive and you drink a cup of milk, you will notice that it's, it has a slight sweetish taste. And um, the, the milk sugar lactose is a combination of glucose, 50-50 glucose and galactose. Glucose, of course, is what you're measuring in your bloodstream. So if it's 50-50 gluc uh, glucose and galactose, it means that in, after it's digested, the bonds between the glucose and galactose will break. That's the digestive process, breaking down everything. And so you'll have um, free glucose with the galactose, but free glucose into your bloodstream. And so milk can <clears throat> increase your blood sugar levels. But if you have it in its natural form with the fat that comes naturally with it, then you will have a slow, slow digestion and therefore slow release of the sugar into your bloodstream. So those are three of three tips, three things, three mistakes that you might be making um, as a diabetic that are, that could be contributing to progression of your type 2 diabetes. 
and ultimately result in you needing insulin at some point in the future. So um, think about it, watch this video again and um, pay attention to these points and hopefully you will be able to start tackling the way you eat. I have more videos on that, but tackling that so that maybe you can actually get off of some of your medicine or at least decrease the doses of some of the, some of the medications that you're taking um, so that your diabetes actually gets a bit better um, rather than continue to get worse. Okay, I hope you all found this video helpful. And if you did, share it with somebody you might know. And if you wanna hear more when I drop new videos, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. That also helps me reach more people. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.